What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Band here. And as we head into March, we have our official March preview with the crew. And if you have not seen one of these videos before, we like to dive into which games we're the most excited about, as well as head into kind of like our discussion into these indie titles that may not have been heard of before, but we're going to be talking about which ones you should be looking out for and possibly buying to play for yourself. So my biggest games for March is going to be the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. And to be honest with you, I when I first saw the trailer for this, I was hyped because I finally get to dive back in to some of these levels that were just legendary, like going back to Coruscant and many of these others that were just epic battles when, when we were kids. And this release is on March 14th, $35 for all consoles, including the Switch. And this is made by Asper and Lucasfilm. So what's interesting about this is that it includes both the original first two games, the Battlefront 1 and 2, and it actually has a 64 player matches with 54 different maps and all the classic game modes are returning. So we're talking about from Galactic Conquest all the way from Heroes vs. Villains. This is honestly the best era of Star Wars games from my recollection. I mean, if you think about this time period is we have the Force Unleashed, we have the Star Wars Battlefront games. This is the best time. And then we get some some dumpo versions in Star Wars Battlefront 2 from the EA. I mean, the second one's way better than the first one, but EA has definitely dropped the ball on having that IP in their in their possession. But I just remember the good old days of playing against randoms. and But now the fact that we're getting multiplayer support makes this so much better. And just to give you a little bit of context, when I played, the only time I've ever played a Battlefront game that had multiplayer support was on the PSP. And that was legit one of the funnest Star Wars Battlefront games ever. So imagine now having that in the kind of this updated console era, I think is going to be a great thing. And I even saw that Steam Deck is going to get support for it. So you know that I'll be playing some Steam Deck Star Wars Battlefront as soon as I can. Um, the the biggest thing that I guess would spit, that I would be annoyed about or I would be concerned about is the fact that the graphics have not been updated since the Xbox days. And I feel like that's kind of something that you, you kind of look side-eyed at like hey you know you've had well almost 20 years to update this game and yes you know ea i can crap on them all day long for what they do in their business practices but one thing they did do was make the game look really good and it looked like a star wars game sounded like a star wars game you're telling me you guys couldn't maybe even up the graphics a little bit to make it even look like a, P a ps4 or an xbox one game but no you let it go sit and simmer in the xbox era um which is pretty intense um, but it's going to still be fun either way, in my opinion. But damn, that those graphics are, uh, are a, definitely a throwback for me. Uh, but Hockey, what is a game you're excited for for this month? Yeah, I chose South Park uh, Snow Day. So this one comes out March 26th. We have a $30 standard edition, a $50 digital deluxe edition. And take a deep breath, guys. You have a $220 limited edition. Uh, this is a collector's edition gonna get you a, a good amount of stuff i'm not gonna go over everything but i think the best thing in there is gonna be a grand wizard carbon talking toilet paper roll holder that talks to you while you wipe your ass uh so very very funny um i'm not gonna spend 220 on it but um it's already sold out i saw it, it's, it's sold out in a couple places so very funny, but this one's developed uh, actually by a three-member uh, group uh, studio. It's called uh, Question, which is pretty cool. So small, small studio, but members have worked on a few kind of high-profile games, Bioshock, um, Dishonored as well. So they kind of know what they're doing. Uh, this is a uh, again a new South Park inspired RPG. So South Park creators Matt Stone, Trey Parker, uh, having heavy influence. So it's going to be super funny, just like the shows. I know you guys have played the last uh, South Park games. I actually haven't, so I might actually cop this one. It's only $30. Um, the big thing, though, this is going to be the first time it's going to be a 3D game, so that's definitely something to keep an eye out on. Um, it's going to be, like I said, small studio, 3D game. The environment's going to be a little different, so we're going to have to you know, take a look at glitches and things like that, so that's probably one of the big concerns. But uh, I think the most exciting thing for me is going to be co-op. So this is another thing that's going to be a first for South Park. You get to play with your friends with this one. So up to four players. Uh, so this should be pretty fun. You know, you're going to be fighting for, you know, the town of South Park. Uh, the unfortunate thing, it's not going to be on Game Pass. Uh, but like I said, $30, not too bad. If you got a couple buddies, I would hop on it and play it. It's going to be hilarious. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, you can tell that they have a little bit of influence from like the Minecraft Legends kind of a feel, the way the game looks. Um, but yeah, the South Park games are hilarious. If you're a fan of South Park, definitely jump into them. They, they are like the... What's crazy is they're even more messed up than the TV show because they're a video game, they can get away with it, um, which is kind of funny. So, Angelica, I know you have a few games on deck. What, what are some things you're excited for this Yeah, month? guys, keep an eye on March 22nd. That's when three games come out on that same day. First one, Dragon's Dogma 2, made by Capcom, coming for all the next-gen consoles, the PS5, Xbox Series X and S, and the PC. Um, on March 22nd, they have the standard at $70, the deluxe at $80, single player open world action RPG, an immersive fantasy world um, that is really diving into exploration customization. And this is where you play as what they call an arson um, or arson. And you have 10 vocations, which are different play styles that you have. And you actually travel with what they call three pawns, a main pawn, which these are AI companions, a main pawn that you customize and two that you make allegiances with. And these guys really help you on your adventure, finding loot, fighting these giant bosses. Um, there's 21 different monster types, 40 to 60 hour main game. So this is another large one. Concern for me though, performance. A lot of talk about is this going to be capped at 30? Is it going to be tried to capped at 60? And the second thing, this is a massive, massive map. And it is unforgiving. So in your when you play this game, your HP can actually degrade over time, your max HP, whether it's environments, whether being attacked. And the only way you can heal is by going to a campsite or going into a town. So again, fast travel is very limited in this game, so it could be pretty damn unforgiving. Another one, Princess Peach Showtime. Coming out for the Switch, March 22nd for $59.99. is obviously made by Nintendo. Um, you're a peach. You're trying to save the Sparkle Theater in an action-adventure game with some platforming elements here. Ten different power-ups with what they call transformations. You get to play in a Mario 64 hub. So, so you, you know, they're bringing in some elements um, into this game that doesn't have Mario, doesn't have Bowser. At least we don't know yet. Um, but from everything that I've seen, but a very simple game. So this is not going to be a target audience for high intense gamers, probably like us. Um, this is going to be more towards an easier component and it doesn't feel like it's a very complex um, in-depth game. Like we're hoping to see more Mario characters and Link outside of Mario and Link get bigger games. This might not be one of them. This is going to be a very simple game to a target audience. And finally, Rise of the Ronin for the PS5. This is made by Team Ninja. This comes out March 22nd, $69.99. We know these guys, they have made Neo, Ninja Gaiden, and most recently, guys, that we played, Wolong Fallen Dynasty. So that comes out exclusively for PS5. This is a combat-focused open-world RPG where you explore 19th century Japan, and uh, you have three different combat styles. This is going to be a really cool environment, and there's going to be a variation of using melee weapons, firearms, um, and long range weapons. So some really cool dynamics of what we've seen in the preview. Um, you're also going to be able to play co-op and there's going to be some choices in this game um, where it will affect the overall story. So those are all some really cool environments. Concern that I have though, nine weapons, right? So nine weapons feels a little bit low, doesn't it guys? When you're talking about a high expansive game. Now I want to get clarity is this nine different weapon styles. Do these weapons can get customized to do different things. But the number nine is a little bit scary. And secondly, everyone's comparing this to Ghost of Tsushima. Mars, you've played Ghost of Tsushima. It's a beautiful game. Uh, they did the Japanese environment very well. The question is, again, if everyone's putting those kind of expectations and Ghost of Tsushima wasn't perfect either. But those are high expectations. And when we played Wolong Long Fallen Dynasty, the gameplay was a little clunky. So is this game a little bit closer to Ghost or is this a little bit closer to Wolong? Long? We'll see. And to kind of finalize this segment for us, I'm going to talk about Hi-Fi Rush and its PlayStation release. And I know that the big hubbub, the big discussion, the, the, <laughs> you know, the hoopla around this is that it's an Xbox exclusive and now it's jumping to multiple platforms and it is going to be arriving on March 18th. Tango Gameworks has a fantastic game and it was shadow dropped for the Xbox back back when it was back in January um, of, of the previous January of last year. And uh, this game was already on Game Pass, but now it's $30 on the PlayStation 5, 35 for the deluxe version. Gets you a little more cosmetic. So uh, it's not a full $70 release, which is great. But yeah, if you got to check out the full review, it is up on the channel. Go check it out. Um, I'll definitely be jumping back into it and seeing how it seeing how it feels. But one thing I can definitely tell you is that this is a one hell of a fun story. And for anyone who's never played the game before, it's a great experience. 
It has some really funny moments. It's goofy. The art style is great. If you like the comic book style and just the kind of the fun, it kind of reminds me of like the old era games where you're not looking for this giant glitz and glamour of this massive open world. It's just a, a linear story with some fun moments to play through, some good story. Um, and, and, and it just is pretty fun combat. I mean, it's a music based combat system. But even that being the, the case, when I first heard about it, I thought it was going to be overwhelming but it actually was pretty standard and even if you're not really have no zero rhythm whatsoever it's relatively easy to play anyway um but i just like the fact they had so many different variants to, of, of combat um but the music was fantastic it was it was one of my sleeper picks for game of the year at least in contention not actually winning it but in contention of it last year um but my only concern i guess i would say is i was really hoping that they were going to drop a, uh, a dlc or some additions that can go with this to kind of bring more people back to the game because yes for for you know for playstation owners this is great you get to experience a really good game um you know 30 dollars is not expensive um but you really wanted to bring more attention back to it and maybe some dlc content could have got there um so i think that it it could have done more to at least get some more hype before heading into its first cross-platform release um, but with that being said, let's jump now to our smaller titles or our indies. And there are a lot of decent indies on here. I mean, we've on the channel, we like to implore or really like to encourage people to go out and play indie games because there are some hidden gems out there. And we've, we've reviewed quite a lot of them on the channel. And, you know, some of them have been straight up like top hits. And some of them have been obviously solid games. But you want to give indies a chance because they have the ability to be really good. And and when I'm looking at the indie that I was looking forward to for this month is Outpost Infinity Siege. It's arriving March 26th on the PC only at this point from Team Ranger. And they are in a code of mystery because they do not have a price tag for this game. I'm not going to guarantee or, or predict, but, you know, it looks like a game that's not going to be a, a $60 price tag. But I could be wrong because if you look at the game itself, there's a lot of really interesting components. It is basically the equivalent of a tower defense game or... Uh, a game that you play like like Tower Defender or Clash of Clans where you develop a base that's trying to defend against an oncoming force. But what's really cool about this is that it takes in elements of, of first person, third person, and you can even take control of different units to kind of like show that you're like you're defending against this massive robot force. And I really think it's fun because not only are you getting to build your own base and defend against other enemies, but you can actually have allies come and help you develop the base and i think it creates that customization there's, there's even uh you know components of rpg elements added into this and i think that it's great that you're you're building in this multi-facet type of game and i think it's going to be a very interesting one to play now when it comes to my concerns the biggest thing i think is that you need to be able to add content to make this feel like more up and up i feel like a game like this that's only pve and i say this about any pve game mode or any game in general you need to have things that can constantly make this feel different because there's only so many times you can build a base and defend against a robot, right? There's only so many times you can do that before you start to feel not maybe bland is not the best word, but feel like it's over overdoing its welcome. And you need to add content, whether it's new units or new enemies or new buildings you can you can create to help defend against these bases so that it feels more open, it feels more variability is there. Um, and I feel like that's the big thing I'm looking for, especially with this type of game. But yeah, I think it, it has a lot, it has good potential. It has it looks fun, it looks enjoyable to play with people. So I'm looking forward to see how this how this performs when it finally does release. Uh, Hockey, what is a indie game that you're excited for here? I chose Hell Breach Vegas. Uh, so guys, I'm bringing you games on a budget. This one comes in at ten dollars, so nine ninety nine. Not bad at all. Coming out for the PC. Uh, we talk about indie games, we're talking about small studios. This is a one-man studio uh, developed by Infinity Ape. And this is a survival game. Uh, now, you know, we really can't call it zombies because they're demons, they're not zombies. But this is pretty much Call of Duty Zombies without the billions of dollars of backing that Call of Duty Zombies has. But for a one-person studio, it looks pretty good. Uh, you got Unreal Engine running it. Uh, guns, movement, maps, you know, the, the three things that you want to see, they look pretty good. Um, you know, the guns, you have a few different variations of guns, you have a couple special uh, equipments, and it looks like you have a, a decent variety of, uh, not zombies, but, um, you know, demons to, to conquer. So, 
Uh, we're going to have to take a look at the concerning parts, though. Uh, you know, smaller studio, we're going to make sure, hopefully, that the game actually runs good and doesn't have a ton of glitches. And for these types of games, especially for me, and I'm sure you guys uh, see this too, uh, it's very repetitive. So, you know, they got to throw stuff in the game that makes it, you know, uh, something that you want to come back to. Um, you know, if they're able to do that, it could be a pretty fun game. But I mean, for $10, you really cannot go wrong. That is is kind of a steal for any you know, gamer uh, on a PC. Yeah, so uh, Angelica, what is a game that you're excited for for the indies? Yeah, and I, I'm going with Pepper Grinder. This is coming out for the PC and the Switch on March 28th. And the demo is actually available for both right now so people can go try it out. And this was developed by RX or published by Devol uh, Devolver Digital. And this is a 2D action-packed pirate adventure where you play as Pepper, and uh, this is a platformer mixing with some fighting elements, and you're using a drill. Um, that's kind of like the big differentiator between this game, and there's different drill bits that you can pick up throughout the game that changes your abilities. Uh, but this is a colorful, vibrant, and this might be a really small and enjoyable game. Now, I didn't get a confer confirmation on what the official price will be on release, um, but the, the ability to get to play the demo, um, and if you really watch some of the gameplay, it's just a very vibrant and looks like a very charming game. Now, the concern is there's a lot of these 2D games, right? I mean, there's a boatload of them. We've reviewed a boatload of them. How do they differentiate itself? The, the, the drill here could be something that's pretty good. Some of the story elements could be also that's something that's pretty good that could separate itself. But that's always a question mark, especially for these smaller games, is in a pool an ocean of these 2D games, how do you separate yourself? And so Pepper Grinder was an interesting one that I saw. Yeah, when I look at March, there's a lot of great games that are going to be available, and I highly recommend that you go test out some of these indies and go check out some of the other you know big games that we've talked about. Uh, but definitely, you know for sure that if there is a big game out there, Marsman Crew is going to be covering it. But are there any games that you're excited for the month of March? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.